Have you ever pushed yourself to the absolute limit? Well, get ready, because today I'm about to start one of the most incredible adventures of my life. Little do I know, as I drink my morning coffee in Porto Marine, that in the next 24 hours, I'll walk almost 100 kilometers to Santiago de Compostela. But before diving into this epic journey, I admit to feeling a tinge of judgment towards the bucket list pilgrims who rush through the Camino in a mere five days. Keep watching, because this is going to be a wild ride. In Saria, this is the point on the Camino where the number of pilgrims just about doubles, it feels like. Because you can finish the Camino by walking from Saria to Santiago. And you can tell the new arrivals by... They look so fresh and clean. And they move a lot less deliberately, more slowly and uh, less decisively. Also, they don't have a farmer's tan like we do. It's funny, you can just tell very easily. I'm not judging, but I'm judging. Some other dead giveaways are very small backpacks and the clumsy use of walking sticks. But hey, I will stop now. I think what kind of bugs me about the Sari to the Santiago Camino thing is that it has a bucket list check mark sort of character. Like, it's one touristy thing to do, like go visit the Eiffel Tower or something. Whereas doing the Camino is um, really about immersing yourself in this month long experience of walking every day. But there again, it's different for everyone, so, you know, it's all good. It's this tiny little place, unassuming, as is so often the case. But dear lord, it's delicious. Our vegan mess meatballs in this small tapas place in Palestine. I feel like I keep moving. I'm not spent. Lots of this, a little more energy. So just walking through Palace del Rey. So I keep on walking today, like I thought I would. And everyone else is also off on their own thing, it seems. So it was in the air, I think. But uh, I think this is the end of the road for a girl group. It was a great one. But uh, for now, I think this seems to be like a bit of a break or an end. We'll see. Maybe we'll meet again in Santiago or Finisterre if I end up going there. But yeah, that's how it goes on the Camino. Onwards.
I'm trying something new because the coffee kombucha are often a bit lacking. So I try espresso with condensed milk. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Tough, huh? Dann Santiago. Ja. Ja, dann quasi, ja. Die alle weg sind. Das ist richtig schön. Melide. Davide. <lacht> Ach so, okay. Von mir aus nicht mehr wieder. is looking like another thunderstorm is about to hit soon. It's happening. It's coming. It is now 4.30 in the afternoon. I've decided to just keep on walking. See what happens. It's been 40 kilometers so far. I'm about 55 from Santiago. I really don't know. Either I just keep walking or I take another barrier somewhere. I'm quite amazed actually that my body allows me to do this. Quite grateful actually because no blisters, no pain, no nothing. I just keep walking for days and days. And the uh, body doesn't complain at all. Quite amazing. It's great. 51 to go. Just keep on walking. Wait, did I call this taxi? Now 7 in the evening, 7 p.m. as they say. I'm still walking. I've been walking for about 12 hours, 11. So now I decided I just keep on walking, see what happens. I'm wondering whether once you get into a big walking habit <laughs> to see if you can take it as far as you possibly can, maybe hit Santiago tonight. That would mean I did one tenth of the entire Camino in a day. But I'm not sure if I'll be able to, or if that's wise, or, you know, I just. I just see what happens. It would not at all be what I thought it would be, but that's typical Camino, you know. It never gives you what you want, but what you need. And maybe this is one of those things. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's intense, as you can imagine. 51 kilometers and counting. My body's doing fine. I'll see how far this takes me and what happens. Walking into the sunset for once. Usually you don't do that because by afternoon you're in the albergue. But it's nice to walk into the sunset.
the thing I complained about earlier, that it's such a zoo with all the new pilgrims. Well, if you walk in the afternoon, or even later, you'll be all by yourself. There's literally nobody on the Camino. Like Jim said, if your body calls for water, give it beer. It's definitely true in the Camino. It's almost a full moon. I'd say that's a good sign. Light my way, moon. Light my way. One for the road. This may seem kind of hard to believe, but uh, I took the same wrong turn after Azura than I did last year. There must be some bad signage or something. Come on, can't be me. Beautiful walk. No one around. getting dark. It's a bit mysterious. I'm in the dark woods. There's an almost full moon. It's gonna be interesting. And it's just such a totally different experience. It's crazy. I mean, it was this social thing. And now it's this radically solo thing at night. <laughs> Walking through the pitch black forest is definitely special and uh, lugubrious and slightly bit scary. And then when I passed a you know, farm, there were two dogs that actually attacked me and even bit me, one in each leg, more to scare me off and that they did. So no bleeding, but uh, yeah, it was quite an intense moment. Anyway, it's now past 11 and uh, everything is closed in the little villages and I kind of need something to drink, but yeah, all right. Moving on. It's now almost two in the morning. What accompanies me is the barking of the dogs. They're just burning the midnight oil with their barking. All of them. <laughs> just so many dogs barking. Well, as long as they don't attack me like those other two dogs, I'm fine. Anyway, so it's about 20 kilometers to Santiago, which means about four hours, because I'm not walking that fast anymore. It's a long trip. A long trek. 
It's been 16 hours now that I've been walking. That also means that I should get into Santiago as the sun rises. That should be pretty cool. Provided I make it. <laughs> it's not a given yet. Another four hours ain't easy. But so far, so good. My body's hurting a little bit, but not bad at all. I guess it's run as high or hike as high. Just keep moving. And the motion itself is what propels you forward. It's interesting how as you walk through the pitch black woods, your senses are all on high alert because you just don't know. You feel your eyes trying to go into overdrive and make sense of little information that there is. Every noise triggers an alert in your brain. It's dark. And without the moonlight, this would not be possible at all. I don't even have a flashlight, except the small one on my iPhone. But I need the battery. I'd rather use the moonlight to give me some information as to where I need to walk. I'm whispering so the animals can't hear me. <laughs> I've walked enough for now. I have a feeling that it is indeed enough. Then Santiago is the destination. Whereas on my first Camino, Santiago was a very important stop, but my destination was Finisterre. So that will be different this time around. Santiago is the end of the road. My Camino map app died just as the signage got really confusing and you can't see the yellow arrows under yellow lighting. So I just didn't know where to go. So now I'm on the wrong track. I will rejoin soon, but it's very annoying, I have to say. Just, oh God, why? Okay, so I made it this far. I guess I'll also make it to the center of town, the cathedral. I'm pretty beat, obviously, but yes, we made it. Look at my face. So, I'm almost there. So, here it is, and destination. Look how empty it is, this time of day. Give it two hours, I will be full. Anyway, can't even formulate a coherent thought, let alone a deep one. So I'll just sit here a bit and see what's going on. So I'm on the plaza near the cathedral. Lots of people here greeting each other. The big zoo of pilgrims. 
happy that they made it. I'm here too and by myself, which is new and interesting. I can observe what's going on. I've taken a nap in the shower and I feel much more human again because uh, I was in bad shape when I got here two hours ago. But now it's much better. She asked for a comparison to the first Camino that I did a year ago. I mean, comparing is always not a good idea. They were both great. I love them both in their own different way. I'm glad I did this one. It was quite an experience. It was intense and funny, beautiful. I filmed a lot more than I used to. I think I'm done for now with the uh, Camille Frances. I mean, I've walked enough. So, you know, obviously I'm kind of beat, so that's my point of view right now. But yeah, what a great adventure. Probably do another Camino at some point because I like the new. That's the one thing that the second one didn't have quite so much. The surprises of the new, you know, when you don't know what to expect. That's great. That's what travel is all about. But even though doing a second one is just as great. All right, over and out. As I record my thoughts after completing the grueling 24-hour, 97-kilometer trek, my voice carries a mix of exhaustion and triumph. With each kilometer, I unearthed a hidden well of resilience within myself. The physical toll was immense, but it was the mental battle that truly put me to the test. Yet, a quiet determination and a burning desire to prove myself propelled me forward. I had covered more ground in a single day than most pilgrims do in four, and I had done it solo. However, that moment of victory was tinged with a deep sense of loneliness. Arriving in Santiago after that incredible feat, I stood in the vast square before the cathedral, acutely aware of the absence of my Camino family. These were the people with whom I had shared countless moments of beauty, laughter and intensity along the way. We had supported each other through the tough times, celebrated the small victories and forged an unbreakable bond that can only be formed through shared adversity. Their absence left a deep void, a bittersweet feeling amidst the superficial sense of accomplishment. Without them by my side, reaching Santiago felt somewhat hollow. There was no one to hug, no one to shed tears with, no one to share in the overwhelming emotions of completing something so monumental together. Traversing an entire country on foot is no small feat, and having my Camino family there to celebrate that milestone would have made it all the more meaningful. They had become a part of me, and I knew that no matter where life took us, we would always be connected by the incredible journey we shared. And then, beneath the loneliness, a profound emptiness consumed me. I had my cake and ate it too. I completed the Camino and would attend my friend's wedding. Two seemingly irreconcilable goals at the outset. I was certain I'd have to sacrifice one. But I refused to yield. I craved both. And I achieved both. But at what price? In grasping for everything, did I truly savor anything? Did I betray my Camino companions with this mad solo trek? Did I, somehow, desecrate the spirit of the Camino? But could I bear disappointing my old friends by missing their wedding? Cherishing friendships deeply, this decision has tormented me since Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port. I struggled to balance both. I saw disturbing parallels to my obsessive need to capture and immortalize moments. A similar obsession to cling to things seems to have driven me here. Did this fixation blind me to the Camino's teachings? Was it ego propelling me? The heroic odyssey, the anticipated glory of a surprise wedding appearance? Did I defy or defile the Camino's unspoken law of surrender 
of relinquishing control, of accepting its offerings, only to seize back control? Did I learn anything at all? The Camino's persistent hold on my thoughts offers hope that lessons were indeed imparted, but they are elusive, demanding attention and understanding. This ambivalent puzzle may forever remain unsolved. Hence, my philosophical musings about the Camino are perhaps problematic. Am I a false prophet? Ultimately, the void left by my absent friends in that triumphant moment poignantly underscored what matters most. The bonds we forge, the love we share, the growth we undergo. The Camino, in all its splendor and intensity, had given me that, and so much more. It illuminated that the true worth of any journey is not in the destination, but in the souls we encounter and the experiences we share. And perhaps, just perhaps, my solitary arrival the consequence of ego was the crucial lesson I needed to embrace. Be that as it may, as one journey ended, another began. Arriving in Santiago just in time to catch a plane to Berlin, I surprised my friends at their wedding, celebrating a milestone in their lives. Seeing their faces light up made the crazy 100-kilometer walk worthwhile. Camera in hand, I captured the day's special moments, because that's what I do thrilled to reunite with another group of dear friends. But the journey doesn't end there. I'm already planning my next Camino, starting in May from Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port. The trail's call is irresistible, despite my hesitation upon arrival in Santiago. Unfinished business, perhaps. If I stubbornly refuse to learn on my second Camino, I'll just walk it again, listening to its lessons. This time, I'll be joined by Bruce from Canada, a connection born from YouTube comments that sparked a deep conversation. The Camino community thrives on and off the trail. The Camino ignites new passions and ideas. For me, it sparked a desire to explore the profound topics encountered during and after the walk. I started creating Camino meditations videos, delving into philosophy, psychology, life itself, really. A creative urge I can't ignore, belonging to share insights gained on the trail. Alongside the videos, I'm launching a Substack newsletter, bringing the story to life in written form. Link below, but bear with me as it's still in its early stages. I'm also excited to experiment with new ways of visualizing my experiences. Raw videos from the trail, capturing unfiltered moments, posted from wherever I happen to be on the Camino quite different from the more polished episodes you're used to. The Camino's auditory landscape, once an afterthought, now begs exploration. Imagine an ASMR walk, a day's journey through sound and imagery. It's like making movies with my ears. An experiment that may fail, but I must try. But first, I'll compile all 16 previous episodes into one epic feature-length movie a significant undertaking that will encapsulate the journey beautifully. Thank you for following along until here. Our exchange means a lot to me. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on these ideas. Subscribe if you want to join me on these new adventures. The Camino keeps calling and I'm ready to answer, pushing limits, making connections, finding inspiration and hopefully learning lessons. Walk with me on this ongoing journey of discovery, both on the trail and within ourselves. And so, my friends, that's my Camino de Santiago story. A tale of resilience, self-discovery, laughter, and the incredible power of the human spirit. And sometimes of the ego trying to have its way. May it inspire you to embrace your own adventures, test your limits, and find the insights awaiting you on your personal journey. Remember, the true value of any journey lies not in the destination, but in the people we meet and the experiences we share. So keep walking, keep exploring, and keep growing. The world is waiting for you.